questions, it's fine. Um, I was a typical North Texas guy back in North Texas before it was UNT. Um, and a University of Kansas guy came down and uh, wanted to see if I could hang on top of it and do it for a living. I made a promise to my parents that if I could make a lab band that I might try to do this for a living. If not, I'd try to do a real job. So um, they said, go try. So I went to North Texas and yeah, I was beating my chest thinking I can't do it or whatever. I went to school together. Thinking, you know, I'll make one of the top five or six, top two or three bands, you know. Anyway, man, they drove up at nine o'clock. <laughs> over, you know. And I got to listening to the other guys in front of me and realized, wait a minute, man, all these other guys are like big fish from their pond somewhere and we're all just thrown in here, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I went to school uh, and um, did the jazz studies degree. Uh, got about 16 hours from graduating. Uh, when I did a Clark Terry jazz camp, ended up going on the road with Clark about a week after that for about six weeks. Uh, went back to school, to go back to school. Should have stayed with Clark, it's more fun. Uh, I went back to school for two and a half weeks. It's a good thing I went back, actually. Uh, and I got a call. It's funny, we drove up at 3 o'clock. And uh, uh, I got a phone call from uh, Kim Ferguson, Jim Exxon, asking me if I wanted to play lead trumpet with Mamie Ferguson. And it was like, uh, I was shell shocked. I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was like a Friday morning, and I ran down and I. Canceled my classes. I went up to school, and you know how it is, man, on the board in the ENT office. Everybody knew before I knew them. Also, I was like walking up to me, like, dude, you gonna do it? Yeah. <laughs> so that was like Friday morning, and uh, Saturday morning I was on a plane flying, and uh, Saturday night we had a gig at the Village Vanguard in New York. And I'd never even been to New York, and I was like, wow. And I'm looking through my book, and a couple people in the airplane looking over my shoulder, and. Uh, Played with Manor Ferguson, and all of a sudden it was a big deal, and I was like a celebrity in an airplane, and I couldn't even play the note yet. <laughs> like, yeah, good <coughs> night. And like four or five of those people showed up with the Vanguard to hear the band. <laughs> so, anyway, it was crazy. It was a real world win. Uh, until all the way back, I guess, uh, high school days, I went, uh, uh, I was a, you know, a typical high school kid, you know, I fifth trumpet in my jazz band when I was a ninth grader in the high school band. It's like a big deal. All the high school guys said, hey, you need to come along with us, man. We're going to Lawrence, Kansas. I grew up in Kansas City. He said, we're going to Lawrence, Kansas here in Maynard, Ferguson. I uh, yeah, man. Sure, yeah, let's go, man. Well, I went to Lawrence, Kansas, Lawrence Opera House. This guy was playing lead trumpet. You are my hero. <laughs> he is my hero. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I was standing in the back of the room, never seen Maynard before. Maynard came running out from the back of the room and brushed right by me. I said, oh, that was Maynard Ferguson, you know. Sure enough, they got up and they did, the, they did the concert that changed my life. I went back to school the next day and said, this is what I want to do. I want to play lead trumpet with Maynard Ferguson. And as freaky as it was, uh, did everything I thought I should do. I took the, got the good teachers, Bryce Ludy, uh, the, the Don Jacoby changed my life a little bit too at UMT. Uh, Jake, you kind of got your head right with what you needed to know and what you needed to do. But uh, uh, anyway, I uh, took the gig and uh, went, to the, went to school and got the gig with Maynard. And, uh, it was uh, some of the best, best times of my life. We had great stories with Maynard. Uh, you don't have time for the stories I have. <laughs> you three or four weeks for his stories, I'm sure. So. And now you're a billionaire too. Yeah, I'm a billionaire too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm playing trumpet still for a living. I, I play in Dallas. I have a band. I got a big band, the Lone Star Jazz Orchestra. Brian, you need to play. Um, and uh, we've got a, we do a lot of stuff down there. Uh, I've got a band Frontline, an eight-piece horn band. We do top 40 stuff and weddings, corporate events, and things like that. Took that band to Japan. We travel a lot. Actually, we had pretty good success with that. Um, nominated in 2005 for a Grammy. Didn't win, but I got to go and take my family. And uh, I was, uh, uh, became a voting member in 2005, so I get to vote every year for seven or eight different categories. Uh, that's kind of cool. And I'm very lucky. I've got a wife and two kids and a very normal life back in Murphy, Texas, East Plano, down by 45 minutes south. <coughs> One half, if you guys want to have a party my house. Um, but uh, anyway, it's, a, it's, it's been great. I thank you, Bill, for putting all this together and inviting me. It's been awesome. Um, uh, What's your favorite Maynard story? What's my favorite Maynard story? All right, real quick one. Um, all right, 
there's three really good ones, but the one that sticks out the most is my second night on the band. We're in Nashville, Tennessee. We're playing this big concert hall. And I'm green. I just did the gang guard the night before, and I'm still shaking, you know. And Marvin Stanwell's got over there and hanging out. And the second night, I'm thinking, okay, it's, you know, it's better. I'm in Nashville, big crowd. And I'm, I'm backstage. I do my warm up. It's about five minutes to downbeat. And uh, Maynard's got his room, you know, and he's he's doing his warm up thing. And you can hear it. And, and it's about, you know, about a minute still. Ed Sargent's back here going, all right, you guys get ready. Get ready to start. Uh -huh. Two minutes, two minutes. Um, so uh, I said, yeah, okay. So I'm sitting back there, and everybody else is on the wings, and Maynard comes out, and he comes out of his room, he's got his uh, whitey tighties on, he's got underwear on, and a, and a, a white strapless t-shirt with garters holding up his socks. He was not ready. And he's, <laughs> he's not ready to go on yet. <laughs> and he's playing his firebird trumpet, the slide, the slide button. And he proceeds, hey, come on in here. I'm going to tell you about story. And he starts telling me about all this horn. And that was made for him the whole thing. We're about 10 minutes into it. And I look at my watch and he goes, I don't worry about that. That will start till I'm ready anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps going and going and going. It's like, you know, Ed Surge is knocking on the door. Uh, Maynard, uh, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe I'm a Dizzy Gillespie. And we're saying, you know, it's just like beautiful stories. Uh, and about 20 minutes later, we finally started, you know, and it's kind of like I felt like I bonded with Maynard a little bit right off the bat. He always treated the trumpet players and everybody in the band very, very, very nicely. Uh, we were treated like royalty. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, second one real quick, Chicago, Soldier Field. Uh, we were doing a, a marching band competition that had been going on for four days. And uh, we were the last big kickoff party at the end of the Sunday afternoon after the two top winning bands had done their thing. And there's about 90, they're talking about 95,000 people. I mean, it's the Soldier Field sold out all around it. The field's covered with marching bands. There's like 100 marching bands that are competing. And uh, Maynard uh, was, let's do the show the way the show's supposed to be done kind of guy. Uh, we had this part where we go out and do Hey Jude out in the audience. And, uh, I remember Ed Sargent back there, we were all talking, Ed's going, uh, man, I don't know if we should send the trumpet players out on this one, man, there's some crazy, crazy screaming kids out there, you know? <laughs> it's pretty nuts, you know, and, and, you know, we're all going, yeah, we're not that big about it either, so. Kind of like they put it, in North Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but they had set up platforms, by that night they had two five by five platforms about four feet up in the air, with little stairs going up with ropes going around it, on the 50-yard line, kind of the opening of the 50-yard line on both sides, and the band was playing in the end zone. So what they had, they, they figured it out uh, that they were going to take us, surround us with, we had Chicago's finest, we had four police officers around us. They took us out, because uh, Maynard said, the show must go on, we're going to do the way we should do it, right? So they took out the trumpet players, they put us on the 50-yard line, put our little stands, and we did the hate you, da 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 so uh, I had a brand new jacket, I'm walking through the crowd, and these high school kids are pulling on my jacket and stuff, I'm getting upset because they're going to get my jacket, I think they're going to tear it, you know. But at one point, it was kind of, kind of scary, you know, they, they hauled us up there and we played our thing, they hauled us back, and it was insane. But uh, that's, that's one of the stories I'll never forget. You told me that you didn't mind the girls that were there. They didn't mind the girls, they were okay, they didn't hurt. <laughs> no, they, uh, they had a lot of fun. I heard a lot of great stories about these guys and Steve Weist, you know, well, I went on right after Steve got off, so I was the guy that everybody asked, where's Steve? Where's Steve? You know, so, uh, Steve was a big help. I, uh, I remember the day I, the day I was going out, I called him up and said, man, or the day I got the gig, I said, what do I pack? He says, all black. <laughs> Just pack black, it's easy to wash, everything's black. And take good soap, that was the other thing he said. So, anyway, it's been fun. One, one quick follow-up question. Are you still in, in the music business? Are you still making a living? Yes, I still play trumpet for a living. My wife makes sure of that. She makes sure I'm gigging. Just, just out of curiosity, what's 
out of curiosity, do you think at this age and stage in life you're playing as well today as you ever have? Or is there earlier periods in your life that you thought you had better command? I'm a league trumpet player, so I'm going to say I'm playing my ass off. Right now. <laughs>